good evening. This morning when I woke up, one of the th habits that one gets into is to pick up your mobile phone because you are in a habit to check phones and mails and everything, so you switch it on. And one of the applications that got downloaded, it was flashing and was uh, very fascinating to see this morning and so relevant here. And I, I looked at it and said, what's it? And do you, which, the, which is the most popular song in the last couple of months that you heard? Kola Veridi. Is that right? Who said that? Oh, that's you, all right, okay. So is that, uh, does everybody agree? That's one of those things that happened. And when I first heard it, it was uh, on the Facebook that I saw. And then I saw a Gujarati version of it, then I saw a Hindi version, then I saw a Hitler story, then I saw a Tom Jerry, all on Kola Veridi. So some kid somewhere was actually setting it up, and this morning, the application is a game on Kola Veridi. It's on my mobile phone, and if those of you who want to see it. So that's just a mention, and before I sort of get into the next level, I want you to see a video, which will give you some data points from where we'll take the discussion forward. <coughs> Can I ask the video to be played, please? Stop here. I don't want to go further because that's on product and things like that. How many of you have actually saw this uh, video before today? Did anyone see it today? One, few. So it was played three times during the day, right? How many times? Twice. Okay. So and and the, and that's just, just a checkpoint on you know. But the important point is the data, uh, some of the, you know, the data that exists there in terms of what's going to happen over the next five years or six years. So future is going to look great and it's going to throw up huge opportunities for all of the students here and uh, especially in the ICT industry where it's going to throw up such large numbers. So we have those opportunities available to us to capture. And some of the things that I think spo speakers this morning, distinguished luminaries like Kiran Karnik and uh, Mr. Lakshmi Narayan actually touched upon some of those issues on a very, um, uh, you know, they kind of, you know, gave you pointers for us to sort of deliberate upon during the course of this discussion and deliberation today. And I think I just want to sort of go back to some of those points and say, what happens after this conference when you go back? And how are you going to take some of this learning into your colleges? And what are the things that you can do individually, collectively, in your respective institutions so that the conference does just doesn't end here and there's a continuity that you can provide when you go back to your respective colleges. That I think is a basic issue. So some of the things that I think this morning we spoke about in, you know, touched upon, what are the opportunities 
for example, Mr. Lakshmi Narayan mentioned about that, you know, why can't individuals look at, and I give you the Koravili example precisely for that reason, was that can an individual who does not have a large amount of capital and uh, amount of wealth or infrastructure available l sit in his room or in his house and actually develop an application or develop a product that can actually generate and create wealth and, you know, become a business proposition over a period of time. And how do you sort of, as an institution, actually make that, you know, enable that eco system that I Ram was referring to right in the beginning in his opening remarks to make it happen in your respective colleges. The other issues related to when Kiran Karnik was uh, speaking this morning, he referred to specific skills on uh, what are the skills that, you know, you should not lose uh, uh, sight of. And I think all the speakers uh, this morning, the common theme that came across, there were three skills that came across very clear to me as I was listening to most of them. Let me ask you, do you remember one of these? What are the three things that they said? What are the three co core characteristics or uh, skill level that, a, that an entrepreneur will need? One, risk taking ability, one. Innovation, problem solving innovation, communication, collaboration, and passion. Of course, passion or innovation, all that is fine. So let's just stay with, you know, things, there are certain things that you're born with, certain things you can control, right? Things you can't control, you can't do it, anything about, but things you can, you should. So what are those things that you think you can control in your respective institutions to be able to sort of deliver that and improvise upon to make that skill available in a, in a student in your respective colleges? So when you look at passion, communication, problem solving, technology, technical skills, domain technical skills, etc. You are uh, obviously providing, as educational institutions provide that uh, core knowledge and core competence on technology and other areas. Can that be done in a manner which will improvise on communication and other skills about developing skills like problem solving? I'm throwing up these questions for you to ponder upon because there are solutions available, right? And we can talk about it uh, and I'll just mention it. So these, when you look at some of these areas and, and, and re reflect back on what you want to do, when you talk about, let's say, you want to develop communication and problem solving skills along with core technology skills that you impart in your colleges, how are you going to be able to do that? How do you nurture an entrepreneur at a grassroots level? And those are the issues. So when you look at these and look at the processes that you have within your own system, one core area that I would want you to really be encouraged upon, and, 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 and I think that's very basic essence of what an entrepreneurship is and how you can nurture an entrepreneurship is to challenge the status quo. Challenge the status quo for a process that exists in your college, in my life, in, in, in everything that I do in my day-to-day -day life, uh, whether it's an admission process, whether it's a process of teaching methodology that you use in your classroom, and the use of technology that it's implied today, and the kind of uh, whatever processes that you have in running an institution, and look at that as an aspect and say that, can I improvise upon that uh, to make sure that I can impart some of these skills which are related to, which will improve the enhancement skills of problem solving amongst the students. Projects have been given traditionally, right, to, to, to be able to address some of those uh, skill building areas. But they haven't been looked at, uh, you know, so effectively, haven't been so effective primarily for various reasons. One of them has been, obviously, <coughs> the fact that <coughs> projects have not been done so well or they've been bought commercially in the marketplaces in the past. But having, you know, I would like to ignore that and say that if you want to go back and nurture that, what are the areas that you can look at to make that really happen in your respective colleges? Yeah? So we, we're going to uh, talk about and deliberate some of this, and I'm going to throw up uh, some suggestions. A lot of challenges are thrown up by the industry, industry, academia, interface that you happen, right? There are a lot of companies that come to you and say, okay, we're going to try and train faculty upgradation. We can do faculty training. We can give you software. We can give you curriculum support. We can help you develop curriculum. Infosys does a lot of that. We do a lot of that. Other IT majors do a lot of that. How does that get imbibed? So you have these bits of puzzles 
in terms of, okay, here are a lot of these inputs that are coming to me. How do you develop a culture which will nurture and absorb all the inputs that are coming to us from various organizations, not only organizations as in you know, the industry per se, but even the other parallel or peer group educational institutions. Are there uh, practices that we can sort of import um, and sort of apply to our processes that we currently use in our respective colleges that will enhance the outcome? My panelist sitting here is Sanjay, and he was telling me when I was talking to him, uh, and he was talking about this compulsory attendance. And when I finished college 35 years ago, we didn't have compulsory attendance in the way institution I studied. So we could choose the professors whose classes we wanted to attend, and we could choose the courses and credits we could do. Whereas here, the education system today doesn't permit you to do that. And no one is challenging it. No one is saying, I want to do mechanical engineering along with, or I'm, I'm trying to do computer science, but I want to do, uh, have a good understanding on sociology or history or geography because I want to develop an application which will help solve travel issues or something, something, I don't know. Uh, or, 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 or open up my uh, mind in terms of uh, what are the possible businesses I can do develop for future. So developing this understanding history, understanding geography, understanding economics, understanding socio-economic uh, scenario in the community or in the world that we live in is equally important as compared to the technology skills, in the, I mean, plus the technology skills. <coughs> and combine that with the methodology of teaching and learning in your classroom. So the moment you go into a problem solving and a case study model, all business schools, by the way, use a lot of business schools today, use case study model where students are, uh, you know, given this case studies and they're supposed to come back with a presentation and make a presentation. They are judged by the peer group and then they go through a complete mentoring process uh, which is supported by the mentors within their own uh, educational systems. And this is not happening in A level or B level. This is happening at C level business schools as well. Maybe some of that can be imbibed in terms of what we are trying to do in uh, uh, our respective institutions. I'm throwing up as some of the suggestions, right? The leadership in the respective colleges maybe <coughs> need to look at and saying that, okay, here are a lot of inputs. Can I get it all in the table and see what I can do with it and make this beautiful picture of my college and make it look really good? Can I, my college be as good as an IIT or any other, uh, the, the best of the college? IIT is today no, no longer the, uh, you know, the, the best of the college, at least it's not featuring in the world's best. It's India still, world, you know, it still remains India's best, but it's not the world's top 100 or top 200 colleges, uh, the, the latest list. I don't know whether to question that list itself, but uh, the fact is it's not there. But nevertheless, it's a good benchmark to achieve, and can we sort of do something to be able to sort of strive for doing that? And that can only happen if individually and collectively in the respective institutions, we, when we go back from here and say, okay, today onward, can I change one thing in the next three months in what I'm doing in my college, in my professionally and personally, that will make it better. And can I imbibe that culture in my college, in my department, to be able to sort of communicate to everyone in my system in a manner where it will be emulated and not, you know, uh, that I'm preaching something that I can't practice, uh, which will be imbibed and say that, you know, can I do something this, can I do this better than what I did last year? And I think that over a period of time, and I can I throw up a problem that students, which they can then use to develop, prob you know, uh, whether it's an application development, whether it's, a, it's, it's something that they develop in terms of uh, um, a product that they can use at a later date, but which can potentially become an IPR product for them at a later date. Entrepreneurship is a higher order skill. It's not, uh, it's not something that, you know, Okay, this guy doesn't want to study, so he's a dropout, and uh, uh, so so he he you know he did something good and all that, right? But I think it's a higher order skill. You had the intelligence to get into the college and choose engineering, and you had the brains to actually drop out. You know, a lot of people give Steve Jobs and other people's examples, but the fact is that they had the intelligence to go there, or or they had the brains to go there, and they had the intelligence to get out as well, right? 
So with that, I just want to close my remarks because the time is very short because this debate is very long. But I want to just end by saying that until we question the status quo, we're going to be in the same, we're going to attend conferences and keep going back. And until we start challenging that status quo every day, things will, you know, move a little slowly and, and more slowly than we expect it to be. Thank you.